Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, it is June 2nd, 1968, in which we're looking pretty good, but Norway accepts. Norway understands the boot of the Reich better than most, and having seen our common interests, have agreed to our proposal. The Norwegian nation will now serve as our intermediary with the Pact states, easing tensions in the Reich. Though a new Russia rises in the east, the pact has no need to fear our resurgence. With the backing of an established nation, our legitimacy grows by the day. With Norway as our middleman, we can attempt to bargain with Germany as equals, not as conscripted slaves. The kicked dog looks his master in the eye. Ah, slightly more growth, and Sweden rejects us. The gosh darn Swedes have rejected a reasonable and mutually beneficial proposal. Citing reasons of neutrality, not wishing to insert themselves into pact affairs, the Swedish government has, in not so many words, told us that we are on our own. Though this situation is not grim, it is disappointing. Lacking Scandinavian airport hampers our claims of legitimacy and leaves us once more alone in the cold. <sighs> well, at least we got Norway. Actually, overall, we just barely touched Norway. And the Finns don't like us, obviously, because we beat them up last time, and we had a really good time. And make sure... Oh, they oh, military access, huh? But yeah, that really sucks that all we got was Norway. But you know what? They actually have a greater chance of reaching out to the rest of the world than Sweden, so... Even though... It is what it is. Regardless, right now we're currently trying to finish up the focus of cutting the chaff, which I think I read about yesterday. So, ooh, conditions we find ourselves in during the liberation of West Russia sometimes necessitated a certain lowering of our standards. Yeah, I think I read this about yesterday. So if you'd like to read this again, please go right ahead. But we're going to go ahead. We finished up this stuff. We can do jam and tea. We do get 50 political power, which actually would be pretty nice. Increase civilian morale by a small amount, but we already have that national spirit, so it doesn't make any sense for us to go down with that. I would like to get, let's see, some more political power. The Russian liberation breaks away. Well, maybe what, I don't want to do that either right now. Just because I think we still get, oh, we're still integrating a lot of areas. We still get a lot of equipment, don't we? We still get equipment, even though it's really not much. But it's still equipment that we don't have to produce right now. So, yeah, we could actually use that. So, let's do that one last. How about that? Yeah... More political power, stability, yeah, that stuff is all okay. We'll do this one, and then we'll do all this stuff. So, an outward-looking army. Not too long ago, our army was filled with factionalism, infighting, and corruption. Its ranks were swelled with incompetent and treasonous conscripts, and our officer corps was overloaded and politically untrustworthy. Although it was more than sufficient to conquer West Russia, the ROI was not the well-oiled machine needed to reclaim the rest of the country from the despots and criminals occupying it. With recent reforms, the fact has changed. The army is now slimmer and more effective. United behind the political leadership in the name of our cause. It's now time to look out for more from our own borders, and it's the best trained, best led army in all of Russia, take the first steps towards total reunification. Absolutely. And as much as I'd love to do this, oh, actually, military morale's high. I would like to get it a little higher, but that's alright. This stuff is good as well. I'd love to do more of this stuff, even though we can still do this stuff. So, in the comments from yesterday, there's quite a bit of support for us to go down either the business route, or just go with the Democrats route. There's at least at the time of this recording, not a huge amount of support for the ROA or the military, which is totally okay. Uh, let's see, piece of business, increased Democrat influence. I would like to do that, but I still want to focus on the guys down south of us, though. And by south of us, I mean the regional integration. Because stuff is all so good to do. I'd still like, oh, really? I think, hmm. Let's get some more war support and stability first. I want to do that one first. Just because we can use that. Do Democrats dominant is nice. A great conspiracy, perhaps it might be true. An hour-looking army. Gunsmithing? Why not? The warlord armies of West Russia only scarcely had modern equipment to rely on, and the most battles we fought on are way to regional hegemony. Both sides were primarily equipped with surplus weapons from the Great Patriotic War, even with this ten-year-old hardware somewhat being of a luxury. Those will not suffice in our future battles. The enemies we have ahead of us will be larger, better equipped, and more industrially formidable than our comparably meager previous foes. The prospect of a serious disparity in equipment quality between us and our rivals is disconcerting enough to warrant immediate action. The ROA desperately wants modern guns and our manufacturing drive across entire territory should get us to where we need to be. Anything less would rele relegate our soldiers to battlefield inferiority in the coming days, to the Urals and beyond. The new recruits diligently completed their physical training under the encouragements and insults of their drill officers. Nikolai occasionally looked at the candidates as he patrolled around the base. These were new. These were a new breed of recruits, motivated and voluntary men, not the desperate conscript of the German days, nor the starving peasants begging to hold a rifle in exchange for some food of the dark days in Samara. These recruits were looking to join the ROA and take a place in the further liberation of Russia. Of course, for every voluntary man, ten more had to be drafted. Yet something of a change in the atmosphere could be detected. Different two were the officers. Many were recently promoted, talk, taking up the spots once occupied. Old, bitter, desperate men, here out on the border, so close to the Urals, or past Urals, really. The new generation of ROA officers prepared for the Great Crusade East. 
Much remains to be done. Guns, tanks, better training standards. They all have to be new. Yeah, Nikolai found himself hopeful. Changes were coming, and there are always enemies who are right to fear the coming war. Which is a good thing. Oh, man. When he cracked your spine, it just... Mm, everything just cracked right. Hopefully. Hmm. And the Iberian Union has defeated... Ah. Very cool. Ah, very nice in beige. Let's see. Barbary Relief. Here we go. I love it. And right now... Actually, ooh, 34 million is really not that bad. Oh, look at that. 9.5% total GDP growth. We are, we are trucking through with that growth, man. I love it. After this, a modern air force. Since the downfall of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, the vast majority of Russia's battles have been fought on the ground. Most of the scattered warlord states left behind had neither the funds nor equipment to maintain a large air force. Our ground superiority allowed us to bulldoze their way through Russia, but this tactical state of affairs was not, will not last. Our future opponents will be larger, more modern states, as easily capable of fueling jet fighters and modern bombers. The ROA needed to react with the utmost speed to these changing circumstances and create a new air force. With the productive capacity of the West Russia's factories lag behind us, building plans is finally within a grasp. Subjugating our eastern rivals will require taking to the skies, and the ROA's best are well up to that task. A 3 triple bonus for aircraft. Nice. And right now, poverty. Oh, we're trying to cut that beast down. Oh, yeah. Oh, we actually have a little bit of liquid reserves. Not very much. But I'll take it. We'll take it, definitely. Okay, so, like I said, we can do this stuff. I don't want to lose stability for now. Actually, we're getting more stability. You know what? Let's try it once. 10%, 5%. It does nothing again. Gosh darn it. Oh, poverty relief, though. Oh, man. I want to do that, too. That's 75 political power. This is 50. Ah, oh, the dam is done in 1968. Wow. Hey, you have a slight, slight amount of manpower, too. Uh, that's not great. I would actually prefer more manpower, but whatever. Getting our toes wet. Unlike with our nascent Air Force, building a strong navy is a relatively mild concern, at least for now. The reunification wars ahead of us will be fought entirely on land or over solid ground. But still, it would be prudent to create a small navy, both to police the waters we do border and set up a framework for what after we achieve total unification. At which time, a large navy would be necessary. Refitting several ships from the Soviet era for the present era should do, at least for now. For leadership, we shouldn't spare anything one vital. This is not a serious priority at the moment. But few would turn down the chance to be the first admiral of the new Russia. We may be starting small, but our successors will surely appreciate our foresight for beginning to step to the Navy now. Good idea. In which we shall grab this one. Let's grab this stuff. It is 68. Nice. Even more max factories in the state. Sign us up. Yes, please. 0.8 billion in debt. That is not ideal, but... Look. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. 10% growth. Oh, oh, my goodness. Let's go grab some more agricultural stuff. RNL, Army Professionalism first, and then agricultural stuff. God, I wish we had more political power. 1.5, though. That's, that's pretty nice every day. Standardization. Let's go with this one. Mechanization of the ROA. The WRW and the Anarchy saw our men carrying kilos and kilos of equipment in and out of conflict zones. Wounded comrades were often abandoned as their men were unable to carry them quickly enough to field hospitals. Strong points were nightmares to capture as light infantry was exposed to artillery and machine gun fire. Mechanization is a pr pr principle. As these are men rely on ever-expanding fleet of motorized and armored vehicles, vehicles that are able to pr transport them to battle to support them during offenses and shield them during follow fights. Firefights. It may be a costly process and yet one that may not be completed for years. But any amount of armor and speed will greatly be... A Better multiplier. Uh, let me re read that. A great force multiplier. My apologies. Oof, my mind just slipped there. We're going to do this one because I want to make sure that we can get some more agricultural stuff. Let's see. Mass mechanization is not bad. If we do this, we get better consumer goods, division, training time, more monthly population, which would be okay. It's not great, but it's okay. We're looking just so good right now. I love it. Beautiful. Just keep making more factories, guys. You're doing a tremendous job. Look at how many factories we got now. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Oh, I love it so much. Modernization of the ROA, though. Once we get advanced computing machines done first, of course. Of course, advanced computing machines. Beautiful. Less than a month for the next attack. Veterans of the ROA long for the day when fighting will end. Their long-suffering weapons await patiently for the final days of work. If you'd like to read about the decrease in poverty, please go right ahead. Modernization seeks to phase out obsolete and obsolescent equipment to leave our men equipped with good quality, modern weapons. It does not mean an obsession with the cutting edge, but rather a strong baseline for all of our troops. Modernization is an ongoing effort and is never truly complete. Nevertheless, modernization will leave us ready for anything. Great. Look at that. Less monthly population, but more recruitable population factors. Stability wars for construction speed. Uh, let's see. Output. We can tax the crap out of people more. I love it. Oh, investment construction. That would not be bad right now, but... Radical ideologies. Well, we're not too radical. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty 100% on the path towards democracy. We'll put it like that. Let's take a look. 
Nice. That's that's quite a bit better. Oh, he's a billion. Oh, that sucks. In debt. Oh, boy. Standardization of the ROA, though, our military industries are now humming at a good pace and all of our men are equipped. It's finally time for standardization to begin in full. The days where five soldiers carry ten calibers of weapon is over. My goodness, ten calibers of we different weapons? Jesus. Standardization has become one of the guiding principles of the Russian army. Standardized weapons, yes, but also standardized clothes, equipment, tools. Standardized food supply, food supply and storage. Standardized leadership structure. The Germans sought to beat discipline into us. We shall turn, in turn, march out into all of Russia with a precise set of instruments needed for the victory. Oh, it's actually... We can't go that one yet. Oh, uh, yeah, we can do artillery. Why not? This one's pretty good. Early artillery? Oh, wow, we got a lot of artillery. Uh, do we really need that much? We're good on equipment, infantry equipment. Anti-tank is where it's at right now. So, let's go and see anti-tank. Hello. Yeah, you definitely need more. Uh, let's go with that much. And cut you down. There you go. If you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. Uh, it's always good to read about stuff. Let's see. Uh, you know what? Let's go do that one. We need four more, so there you go. And we'll spare you one. Thank you. Not bad. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, my friends. Less than a billion in debt for now. That's good. We got this too. Invest in construction, worker training, expertise. I like the bonus to industry. We're going to grab that one first. I normally don't click this one. And I'll choose the other ones. But a bonus for industry would actually be helpful since we're still trying to catch up for researching stuff. Nice. So good. So good. Fortifications, value for money. Ooh, I like that. Greenwater Navy. Let's do this one. Value for money. Our ambitious program of weapon equipment development has inevitably run into delays and problems. New weapons and vehicles encounter teething problems on the first distributions. All of this is natural, but expected by our engineers and, and official officers. Oof. Underperforming designs are being reworked or removed from production. Improvements are made to, in to industrial processes. Day by day, we shall calculate the perfect ratio of money to effectiveness for every piece of kit and work to improve it. Education is next. We're doing extreme. I love this. 10.2%. 0.99 billion. Holy cow. The next research will be done in quite a few months, so it doesn't really matter. Value for money. More cap, growth, and factory output. Sign us up. I love it. Woo. And then fortification, shall we? Our frontiers with the Germans and other Russian warlords are thousands of kilometers long. As such, it is impossible to fortify every centimeter of it. Nevertheless... We have learned much about fortification efforts in the wars of unification in the WRW. By fortifying important valleys and roads throughout our border, and by creating well-armed readouts, we can slow down any invasion and extract heavy casualties in the beginning of any new war. These positions will be as important when we go on the offensive as fallback areas should attack plans go awry. Which is a very good thing. <clears throat> and we're now back up to over a billion point three two in debt. Which is obviously not a very good thing. Let's see. More divisions. Not bad. Cut. Uh, that's a case. I'm going to cut these guys down. There you go. <coughs> not bad. Not great. And let's see. Invest in scientific research is next. And then poverty relief. Persuade other factions. Cool. Value for the money. Yeah. Minus 1.66. Not bad. And then... Uh, Hominization? Sure. Even though we can't really use that for land doctrine, I think, anymore. War has become a compl complicated business. Every year, there are new weapons equipped our soldiers with, new training methods that better prepare the men for combat, new tactics that will provide a crucial edge on the battlefield. And this were not enough to keep track of, then each of these new developments is supposed to work in conjunction with another. We've managed to keep our men equipped with modern weapons and trained to modern standards. Our generals are keeping up to date with the latest developments in strategic thought. However, our army still feels somewhat discordant. Our officers must know how they can use modern tanks and IFVs in the maneuvers most effectively. The men must be trained with modern rifles and anti-tank equipment. It is not enough for the military to be well-equipped or well-led. Every part must be moved together in harmony. Only then will we have a modern, professional army fit for a nation, not a warlord. And time for some more coffee that we do have. But happy 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. We're just trucking along now, having a good old time. Welfare policies, heck yeah. Infrastructure wouldn't be bad, too. Heavy machinery is good as well. Now, I could just not cut the military spending, but it's still part of the debt, and I'll get that done as fast as possible. And cutting this does hurt our... Oh, there goes LBJ again for a second time. Um, hurt our, you know, population that we can use for the military. Not bad, though. Not bad. And actually, next one will be done in a while. 
Let's go Future Warfare. Blue Sky research in a military setting consists of researching things that may not have immediate use or applicability. While this type of research should never monopolize all of a nation's resources, it can pay big dividends to stay on the lookout for technologies that are just five to ten years away from the being relevant. As their industrial base expands and as our army gains experience fighting various enemies, old ideas must be investigated anew. Who knows what the future holds for the Russian army? A lot of conflict. A lot of conflict. <laughs> there we go. I'd love to do this, but... Mm. Heavy machinery, equipment... You know what? Let's do this one first. And this is all done for now. So after this, we're going to go ahead and do uh, begin poverty relief efforts because we really want to focus on the people, even though business too, but still. A green water navy. As more international commerce comes online and as our ambitions realize themselves, it is time to expand our efforts to reach a green water navy. Such a fleet would be able to patrol a corner of the Baltic Sea and bloody the nose of any fleet attempting amphibious assaults on our territory. This type of ships are needed, or which are small, and within our reach. Conventional subs and destroyers will pose a threat to any foreign presence in our home water as long as they are well supported by land-based aviation because, well, we can't afford big old chunky, heavy, thick capital ships just yet. Now we're currently 2.7% recruitable population. Effective total manpower is modified to 79%. Actually, lowering poverty helps out, it looks like, maybe. Not bad, not bad. Ah, artillery, you're done. Good for you, son. Good for you. All right then. <clears throat> Actually, do we fit in here? Yes. Good. Over 103 billion in GDP. I love it. Full mobilization, though. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is not good, actually. Western Russia is now reunified with the most populous region of the nation firmly under our control. We are now able to decide how that population will serve their motherland. The decades of devastation Russia endured annihilated everything resembling a national industry. <clears throat> This provides us with a chance to start fresh and create a new economy that is fine-tuned to serve our purposes. In the short term, at least that will involve us focus on rapidly increasing military production as we prepare for the looming conflicts for East and West. Each and every citizen will do their part to build a new, stronger Russia. When the next war comes to the motherland, we will not need a transition to a war economy. We will already have it in place. Yeah, that's... That, I don't know. That seems a bit extreme to go there already. Um, I'd love to do this one, but that mine is 50%. Oh, I'm, I want to de 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 delay that just by a little bit longer. That's a really huge hit. And that hurts our political power gain. I'm going to do the jam and tea first, just to get some political power and stability. Improved ties with the wider world makes it possible to expand the supply of luxury foodstuff. Foreign delicacies have long been missed by the population of Western Russia during the anarchy, and the return of these luxuries will help us still further with the population and common soldiers. In particular, the return of caffeinated hot drinks will be much louder throughout our nation. Oh, it's disappointing that I'm almost done with my hot drink. Oh, no. Well, it's no longer hot. Okay, so that's all done. Yes. So, currently we're at 36 in favor of Democrats. And now we're 38. I wouldn't say that's an extreme benefit. I wish we could get slightly more political power, but, you know, it is what it is. Free dockyards, eh? Cool. Not bad. Persuade other factions. I mean, yeah, there doesn't seem like too much here. Like, even if you keep going down, like, the business route, or not the business route, but the Democrat route, like, there doesn't seem like there's that much for us down there. So, GMT is nice. Yeah, I, I'll even do this one before I do the full mobilization. And this is our declaration we've clearly seen to the world that the ROA is not and shall never be. A tool of the Germans. Now we must work to minimize our past ties to the German occupiers. Everyone received international recognition. There are, of course, various angles of strike at it. Italians, Americans, Japanese, and among now, many others might be delighted to see a unified Russia emerge on Germany's doorstep. We can equally underscore our opposition to communism and hint at the, at the breakdown of our relations with the Germans as a cause for a future conflict with the collapsing Reich. Probably a good idea. More research speed, shall we? 110% nice. About a month left. Nothing here yet. Almost minus 3 billion. That's... We're doing really, really well. Like, I keep saying that, but... Like, we really are. <clears throat> Look at all that. Oh, my goodness. We could do that some more, but... What would the point be? Well, almost 100% stability, too. Uh, we could grab this. It's, uh, you get 5,000 more manpower, which could be kind of useful. It's only 35 political power, so... Slightly increases GDP. So be it. Persuade other factions. And they'll read about open our doors. 
It is certainly that our previous, or it is certain that our previous work for the German dogs have done much to taint our young nation in the eyes of the world. This does not mean that we should resign ourselves to this fate. We've already established contact with the intelligence community in a number of country, or countries. By inviting, now inviting a range of NGOs and civilian officials, we can show the world we have nothing to hide. This way we can begin to grow a new narrative, one of a burgeoning democracy in Western Russia. Of course, nothing must be left to chance, and so the sites shown to our visitors will be carefully arranged. Honesty is like sugar and coffee. Having too much of it can turn a sweet thing to undrinkable sludge. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Okay, so they're going to kill each other over in the east, which is great. I kind of want to do this again, just to see how far we can go with this. Now we're at 39. It does nothing, which is disappointing. Actually, huh. Okay, maybe that's not bad. We'll go full mobilization and then do lower draft laws. Because then we won't be losing as much political power and stuff like that. Let's try that, maybe. Let's save our political power up. And then when we can do this, we will. Eventually. And there's nothing else here, which is totally fine. Hey, there goes that thousand manpower. Oh, and artillery base bleed. Good, 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 good. Let's go and grab this, too, then. With, we could do this one. Yeah, military austerity, civilian budget boost. Might as well do this one. Nice. Boost. Cut. Cut. Open our doors, and then Russia strong and free. <clears throat> strong and free with you and me. And every heart, both in Russia and abroad, shines a little light of hope under Chairman Zykov. A free Russia rises, guaranteeing its citizens' safety and dream. Under Chairman Zykov, a strong Russia rises, able to crush every other pretender and liberate Russia. And every heart shines hope, safe for the safe for in the elite in Germania. There one hopes. The hopes of millions of Russian casts shadows on the future of the illegitimate Reich. We get stability. We get war support. We get political power. The U.S.-Japanese talks begin. Please don't end a nuclear hellfire. And that debt is not bad right now. It's really not that bad. We got a little bit more armies, uh, army XP. Navy XP is looking okay. Air Force is looking okay. Man, we got a lot of political power. Oh my goodness. It's not bad. I love more infrastructure. I really do. But 50% more construction speed for 35 political power. Actually, you know what? Let, let's 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 invest in spending and just build 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 build. Oh wow, we're actually running out of things to build. Well, that's not ideal. Let's keep it on one two three four five six seven eight nine point two five. And these guys are killing each other. So war in Yemen. Cool. These guys are killing each other. Keep it up. Keep it up. Let's keep it at six for now, because I don't mind building up some more infrastructure that can help us with getting more, you know, uh, resources. I couldn't think of the word there. What was wrong with my brain? I don't know. A lot of things. Maybe not. Let's see. Minus three point four six billion. My goodness. Ah. Uh. And since we're still at the stage, we can just kind of wait to hopefully get some more of this up now, down here too. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts, man. Hey, it's already been one year since we started this episode. It's now July 1st, 1969. Nice. Oman is killing Oman. Good luck, Oman. And if we have to, the Army of National Liberation. Our enemies mocked us as cannon fodder, loathsome vermin deployed to absorb casualties for the German devils. An opinion shared by our former German masters who wrote us off in the aftermath of the WRW. A decade we spent in Samara training and waiting. Of our enemies in West Russia, none stand. The Red Army remnants have been crushed and thrown into the dustbin of history. The Tsarist mummies have joined the Reds in the fate. Only the ROA stands. Our enemies mock us no longer, veterans and recruits alike fighting with modern equipment. Let the Germans cower in the rotting empire as we march to the Pacific, for the ROA marches out of heck and into a future of vengeance and national liberation, which slip leash, so we get slightly more population, 4.5% attack, which is very odd to see that precise amount. It's not just 5%, but it must be, you know... Must, our national spirit already probably hurts us. Recovery goes up. War support by 15%, which is nice. And then Alex's decision to exert influence in the Euros. Maybe I should have taken this one a little bit earlier. Earlier, But, hey, whatever. Only half... half oh, my goodness. Oh, I love it. I'll, I'll be interested to see <clears throat> in the future for the toolbox update for uh, TNO. If the e economics will hurt or help <clears throat> societal development. Just like, you know, oh, you have a massive amount of debt... How would that hurt or help other factions? Or like, how would that help your society? How would that help or hurt the lower class? How would that help or hurt the better upper class, you know? I wonder if that's going to happen. Maybe, maybe not. I'm just speculating here, but it'd be kind of cool if it did. Uh, let's see. If you'd like to read about army, better army professionals, then please go right ahead. This happens every campaign where we're focusing on it, so we get less political power, more organization, recovery, attack, defense, max planning, and intelligence. Excellent. Absolutely Excellent. Actually, we should probably be focusing a little bit more on armor. There we go. Let's build some T-64s. 
and get some transistor computing. Nice. Oh, we actually have no debt now. Look at that. So good. So bad we're good. We're still going up by 5.75, 8.75, or whatever it was. 4, 6.25. I mean, Samara is a lot of fun, especially when you're doing really well. Of course, if you're doing well as anybody, it feels pretty good, doesn't it? Nothing there yet. And actually, any other decisions here first? Advanced elemental subsidies, eh, liquid stability, meh. That doesn't do anything else. We're still at 40, so doing that just means nothing. So, by far and away, the Democrats are doing well. We have 286. We're going to need it when we take out these people, but they're, they're just taking so long with their stuff. I mean, yeah, we can do this too. Oh, wait. Prepare for war? Uh. Mm. Oh, I guess we could have done beginning unification talks. Well, alright. Well, whatever. Nice. Not bad, not bad. And so that's it for the focuses for now. But let's go ahead and do this. We get 20% more stability that we don't need at all right now. More naval XP, which we don't need really at all. Exert influence in Kazakhstan? I think so. Let's get ready, boys and girls. And new territories? Oh, yes. More civilian morale? How much civilian morale can we afford? Oh, look at that. Oh, he just got a quarter million manpower. Because we're on full mobilization, probably, actually. Our struggle for the land east of the Euros wasn't an easy one, but we're the clear victor. And now our administration spans from the German-occupied Russia's borders to the west. To the point well beyond the press of Ural Mountains, just, but just because we won the battle doesn't mean that we've won the peace. Much work still must be done to ensure that we win the hearts and minds of our new populations over. It's time to prepare our new land for its integration into our fledging democratic system. Already, Zakov's agents and administrators have been making inroads in western Siberia, setting up polling stations and educational areas to prepare the long-oppressed people of Siberia for the onset of democracy. Even isn't a perfect one yet. And we get more political power, too. Oh, Army of National Liberation. Cool, we've got something else to read. Military intervention. Um, as much as I want to, you know, not go to war with them, we're just going to get them done and dusted with. Anything else? Oh, we can't do any more social development, societal development. Arr. Actually, do we still get smuggling stuff? No. I don't think so. Corruption? We could lower that. <coughs> uh, I would like to increase some military stuff, maybe. Luxury goods for officers. Ooh, we want to get down corruption, then. By a large amount. Well, I'll do that one because we have the political power for it. Investigate corruption. There you go. We lost some political power, but hey, it's still high. And actually, if that's the case, ooh, by a large amount. Now it's very high. There we go. All right, we're very good. All right, then. The Army of National Liberation, after a long day of patrols and drill, and the newly minted Corporal Gennady Volkov sat down on his bed opposite his friend and longtime ROA member Konstantin Pavlovsky. The pair, along with the rest of the squad, had finally been taken off of front line action in standard troop rotation, and Volkov found himself oddly empty. Too surprised, he enjoyed his time on the front lines even during the bloody unification wars against the Tsars, Communists, and others. He had felt a pride in his chest as if he was doing something good for the first time in his life, and that he was working towards something greater than himself. But rear guard duty was sort of boring to the young corporal. As he pulled off his new boots, he noted how much comfier they were than the ones he had been issued when they first joined up. Sorting or storing his rifle, assault rifle, he recalled the days when he had began when he'd been given a German uh, Car 98K, the bullet of which seemed to jam after every other shot. Now, what he and his entire squad, for that matter, were issued could seemingly be dragged through the mud and still work. These changes were incredibly apparent for the young man who had witnessed vast changes in his relatively short tenure. As he sat back down. Uh, <clears throat> on his bunk, Pavlovsky, across from him, was reading. With change in his mind, he asked the grizzled veteran, Say, Pavlovsky, what do you think of everything has changed? A small grin crept over Pavlovsky's face, and he turned his head to face Vol Volkov and closed the book. I think that the changes are pretty crazy. If you told me three years ago that I'd be sitting here with a belly full of clothes, or food, clothes that hadn't been worn by three other people before me and a gun that works, I'd have told you that you're crazy. The man was notoriously laconic, but Volkov always pressed him for more. Have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, when the army was forced to fight with the Germans? Silence before Pavlovsky's response came. Oh, God, I can't remember, it seems. He ran a hand through his silver scruff. I can barely even remember the equipment they gave us. The missions were, we were given. Complete suicide, they were. You'd be lucky to get their assault rifle, the SCG. Usually, you'd have old rifles, the ones that, I guess, that their own soldiers couldn't use. There was a pause. The old soldiers signed. There were so few of us left from then, but I think that every one of us is grateful for what we have now. Besides, now that we're free from the grip of Germans, well, I finally feel pride in fighting in something, for something, other than revenge. Looking forward, in the future... It's going to be great. Hey, they're turning to the old.
Well, good for the UK. Good job, guys. Yeah, I mean, we're doing really, really well. New territories. Now, partial elections in the east increase ROI influence. Slightly decrease courting time. It goes Ho Chi Minh. Goodbye, Ho Chi Minh. Into the atomic age. Uh, let the Easterner run. So, uh, let's do this one. Since we want to go with this route anyway, so. Preparing the elections. Cool. No, actually, it's not too bad. You get less ability, more political power. Controlled opposition. Um, let's do this one first. Actually, get more political power. So, regardless of how we plan on approaching the democratic question in Siberia, there does need to be some cursory preparations for the actual elections themselves. For years, the people in the region have suffered under tyrants and dictators, let alone before that, the Soviet system. Almost none of the people in our newly acquired territories remember, let alone understand the importance of democracy. Thus, a lot of work must be done to ensure that our new territory is properly prepared for the coming elections. People must be made aware of voting and how to do it, when, where, and perhaps most importantly why. Furthermore, we have to look at the administrative side of things, creating voting districts, hiring administrators, and bureaucrats to ensure that votes are collected, tallied, and reported on correctly. And before we do anything else, I'm going to make sure that all of our soldiers are 40 combo with, and I think we're probably going to grab um, logistic companies, because that would be good. I'm going to do this just because we have all this manpower now, and I want to make sure that we're not going to be de demobilizing any more so we can actually use this or use the manpower before it leaves us. And I would like to lower the draft laws too, still. So, I wonder when we can take that, but it's going to be a while. That's okay. From chairman to do that. So, let the Easterner run. Despite what the army may want, the Zykov, or Zykov is still the man in charge, and the chairman envisions a functioning democracy for all of Russians. Ultimately, our new citizens are still just that citizens of a republic, and thus, they should be treated as such. Of course, we will encourage as many people as possible to join and vote for Yedinstov. Or Yedinstov. Vo, but at the end of the day, no free nation forces its people to support a party that they're not interested invested in. The people should be given a choice, a real choice, to determine their future. Let's ensure that their young and fragile democracy inspires real hope among the people. Invest, cut, invest. Cool, that's so good. All right, so we still got one more here. Let's go ahead and do some more there. And anything else here? Oh yes. Let's pause it real quick so it makes it a little faster. So we can do this real quickly. Boom, 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 boom. Good enough for now. Let's go ahead and do. Let the Easterner run. Nice. Beautiful. Oh, and up there too. Crisis is nudging. Pray they survive. Good luck, guys. You're going to need it. And then, actually, we're going to build an airface over here. Freedom of the press. Oh, no. They need freedom of the, of the press over there? What? They need freedom? So, Yelena thought they would never be caught, much less be interested. Uh, much must be the interest of the government at all. Nevertheless, here she was, in an apartment with newspapers ripped to shreds covering the floors with a mess of new paper. They were just college students writing a newspaper. What was so wrong about that? One of the policemen stood out, obviously in charge. This newspaper has been de declared or deemed illegal by the government and the ROI. All who refuse to leave these premises will be removed by force and placed in jail for conspiracy to promote a communist revolution and assassinate Chairman Zykov. Those arrested will not be released until the election concludes. However, I promise if you leave willingly, you may go about your lives without the threat of arrest nor harm. Please just listen to these men, said Mark, the head writer of the newspaper. Things have gotten better now. We're having elections. We don't need to destabilize them with left-wing newspapers, writing about how much better a social state could be. <clears throat> What's gotten into you, Mark? Shouted Yelena as she began to cry. These men obviously don't support democracy. Does the democracy have secret police that arrest anyone with a radical opinion? Sure, why not? You were bought out by these guys, weren't you, Mark? That's how they found us. Mark stammered, saying, oh, well, I still had to Yelena, they would have arrested us all. Please, please just go, forget about all this. I'll never forget this, and I'll never support some fake democracy that arrests those who oppose it. You can take me away kicking and screaming all, all you want, or you won't take me away at all. Unfortunately, but sometimes, unfortunate, but sometimes a democracy must sacrifice its freedoms for the sake of stability. Ah, I love limited democracies. Don't quote me on that either. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep. Pretty much ready for this. I'm pretty much ready to, we're pretty much ready to go at this point. Like, oh wait, we actually have Oh, we actually have the tank division. Uh, actually, I want to convert you guys to, to the better tank division. Oh, there goes those guys. Good luck. Let the Easterner win. And I just want to go to war. Can we just go to war? I just, I just want war. And, oh, there goes those guys. Under restraints. Of course, uh, while it's always important to ensure that the people have a real voice and righteous self-determination, it's risky for us to completely allow the Russians of Siberia, with the weight of years of tyranny and oppression weighing on the shoulders, to vote wantonly for anyone that may rouse populist whims filling the people's heads with sweet nothings. Even if we were to allow free and unadulterated election results in most of the East, there may be need... There may be need to work some things out. A district reshuffling here, a small transfer of money there will show that the Yedins, though, will have an actual presence in the places where they need to be. Very good. And even more industry, because we love industry, shall we? Yes, we shall. Persuade other factions, that's a complete waste. But what else am I going to spend my PP on? 
quarrying places, and then goes through down and into the atomic age. Russia has long been regarded by powers near and far as a backwater, vast, steep, full of peasant farmers, decades of revolution, collapse, and civil war, which has done little to challenge this perception, but this will soon change. With the resources, human and otherwise, that we've acquired during our campaigns of reunification, we possess the ability to begin a nuclear program. The power of the atom is a great equalizer in the game of geopolitics, and we shall now act to harness it for ourselves. Which, I wanted to do this side a little bit more quickly, just because... I usually focus on the other stuff, and the Atomics era, Atomics stuff is not super, super important, but why not? You know, why not? <clears throat> Under restraints. Uh, Carol clenched the speech in his shaking hand. Sweat poured from his forehead. The population of Coral couldn't have been more than, several, more than several hundred, but the officer could have sworn he felt a million eyes staring into his soul. The crowd had gathered around the podium in anticipation of the campaign. Carol tried to compose himself. This isn't the army anymore. you got to play the fool's whims. <clears throat> Brothers, I greet you on this f f fine day in a desperate effort to sound compassionate. Carl's voice came out shaken. I assure, that you, I assure you that I stand by my policies, freedom and prosperity for every man in this town. My allies, they, uh, <clears throat> assure me that they will transport new farm equipment to Corolla as soon as I get elected. The crown returned light applause. Carl was a minor Ural town, the home of the aging and the dead. Never, nonetheless, Zykov himself assigned Major Corel to run for mayor. Just show these people that we're on their side. I myself am um, I'm from Carol, Carol Live, and now I have returned. I don't remember you. A raspy voice came from the back, like a double door. The crowd separated to reveal an old man, barely supported on a stick, pointed at Carol. I've lived here all my life and never seen you. The crowd turned to Carol. Stay calm. Well, I have changed, proclaimed Carol. Yes, I fought in the Jur uh, Western Army. Left when I was a boy. Never heard of no boy named Carol. The old man interrupted him again. <laughs> the crowd looked back at the politician. All right, I confess. Um, decreased corruption by medium amount. The old man must be mad. Ooh. Negligible corruption. All right, I confess. Okay. Decrease ROA influence greatly. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Let's see. Take a look. So now it's 43, 29 and a half, and 26 and a half. Not bad. Four-year draft with two-year... Wait. We're on total mobilization, aren't we? No, we're on... Oh, we're on four-year law. I thought we were... On... Oh, hello. Oh, we're at war. Oh, well, you know what happens. We, you know, we just end up being at war sometimes. I'm not even going to bother reading that. Address your uranium problem. Russia is a truly enormous land, possessing many varied resources in advance abundance. How unfortunately, though, uranium is not one of those, so far as we know. Without a steady and reliable supply of uranium, we will have no program and thus no bombarino. We must therefore make every effort in order to find the supply as soon as possible. No matter what it costs, we must find new sources of fissile material. To grant influence, more third terrain stuff, assessing the army, not bad. Improving party unity, slightly decreased scoring time would actually be pretty good. Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. Academic base would improve, which is probably good to do as well. As it would increase our amount of APCs, that would be kind of nice. Um, are we missing anything here besides main battle tanks? That's pretty normal. Tanks, maybe some casts. No, we're doing well on casts. Cool. Yeah, we could probably use some more tanks. There you go. Mm, I don't really want to cut anything else. Oh, you can go down by 5. There you go. And we've already read this. Address the union problem? Why not? Cool. Um, oh, let's, let's do all this stuff since we have the political power. And we get better academic base and research facilities. Yes, please. That's what my PP's for? Huh. Hey, if you'd like to hear about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. Now we're, I think, at the top of the food chain now. Literally. With modern agriculture, better division training times, monthly population goes up, less consumer goods. I mean, beautiful. Yeah, there you go. Build some more. Cut down the debt. We have a little bit of debt, but not very much. So, not bad. How many casualties have we taken? Less about a thousand. About a thousand versus a hundred thousand. I mean, it's great. It's just great. It just works. And then establish closed facilities. <clears throat> just as we are desperate to unlock the secrets of the atom, our enemies are equally desperate to prevent us from doing so. Although there are many ways to increase security, very few are absolute, and absolute security is necessary when the stakes are so high. We will therefore sequester our entire nuclear program, laboratories, enrichment facilities, reactors, and production lines. In closed cities, these cities will not permit any entry or exit to anyone without direct authorization from the highest levels of government. Although cumbersome and expensive, such as irrelevant, we must have safety and security for the program, and we will. My apologies about not like letting that sound go on. Oh, we have won the war. But it happens every time, so... Or not every time, but it happens enough that... I'm not too interested in keeping it around. You know, it is what it is. And now we get your core stuff, which is nice. And anyone else, anyone else around here? Sergey, who wants a promotion? APC is nice. Uh, who's not politically connected? Vladimir, I'm not even going to read it. Vladimir, you got the job. 
You can be as offensive as possible. And we get more board attack. And they should be led by who's got the most attack? Mikhail, but you're politically connected. I don't like that. You're politically connected. I don't like that. Nikolai, you got more attack than you go. You can do that too, because you'll be leading some infantry too when the, ba the battles occur. Which won't be a bad thing. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Research. Oh, we can do this first. So what is this? APCs. Nice. We're doing that. And focus a little bit more on APCs for now, maybe. And integrate a lot of places. Oh, wow. We didn't even have enough for that. Wowzers. Wowzers and Bowsers. Establish close facilities. If you like to read about better industrial expertise, please go right ahead. Excellente. And then the foundation for research. More than 20 years of civil war has, among many other things, all but destroyed the educational infrastructure of the nation and led to the immigration or death of most competent scientists and physicists. If we were to have any hope of continuing and completing this nuclear program, we must address this. We cannot wait for skilled scientists to make themselves known or return at from afar or for advanced institutions or institutes to be reclaimed. We must act. We will directly fund the universities and research centers that we do have and monitor them closely for students of loyalty and aptitude who can be directly recruited into a development program. Which we're actually losing almost half of political power every day, but happy 1970, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Wow, we're losing 0.6. Holy crap. <laughs> Beautiful, though. Minus almost 5 billion. Not bad, my friends. Not bad at all. So, you guys go and train. We got enough divisions for now. It seems like we have almost... 40 divisions, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. There you go. Improved main battle tanks. I love it. Even better main battle tanks. It is 1970, so happy new year, everyone. Uh, actually, happy new decade, really. Uh, we got to focus on more technology, which will be good. And do we have any extra planes in reserve? Yes, we do. I love it. Go and train for now, actually. Split them up. And then improved academic base. If you'd like to read about the academic base, please go right ahead. That's good stuff. We have almost 300 factories. Primary schooling. Nice. And then, there you go. Tokyo standoff. There you go. And expand the Kurgan mines. Our efforts to locate additional sources of uranium domestically have borne fruit. Just east of the Urals near the city of Kurgan, surveyors are claiming to have found a massive depot of uranium ready for exploitation. In order to secure the deposit, an entire mining operation and the infrastructure surrounding it will have to be built from scratch. The effort required will be enormous and the cost even greater, but such is irrelevant. We must have that uranium. We gotta get them bomberinos, man. Oh, yeah. 128. Jesus. That's so good. <laughs> no, we're losing political power. Hey, maybe record something, though. That's kind of nice. Construction is going okay-ish. We need more civilian factories being constructed, though. Thank you, thank you. Now, after that, we're going to go ahead and do uh, source for material. If we cannot find enough uranium to support our program domestically, we shall have to look farther afield. Agents, legal and otherwise, will be dispatched across the world to research and investigate both known and rumored uranium deposits. Whether we must buy the material, trade for it, or steal, we will acquire it. The program must continue, and a bomb cares little for where the material inside it comes from. And now we have over 130 billion in GDP, even though our political power isn't looking very good. But we're slowly trying to prove that. But chase the sun, my friends. Although it'll be a long time before we have an operational nuclear weapon, we have successfully built the infrastructure necessary to ensure that we eventually will. Our laboratories and research facilities are constructed and secured. Our educational institutions are turning out scientists with the necessary skills. Our agencies have secured both domestic and foreign sources of fissile material. All that is left is... Timerino. When the day comes, we will complete our first nuclear test. We can then take pride in both our accomplishments and in the knowledge that Russia will, at long last, be free of outside interference. And that's so good. Only 100 million in debt? Not bad, man. And how are we looking for some of the stuff? We can lower the draft laws, but obviously we don't have enough PP for this. And we still can integrate Yurolsk and Prodrix Molinia. Oh, look at this. More military factories? I don't think we need more, but you know what? It looks like we could use a few more tanks, so not bad. There you go. Wow, we got... Okay, we got 30 more um, just because we had up to 30. Uh, not bad, not bad. Oh, we need more APCs as well. Oh, that's okay. We still want to integrate more places, so cut, spend, love it. 
Chase Hassan, and from Chairman to President, this is like a former Chairman of the Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia, abbreviated as Konar and Krillik, has set in motion his ultimate design, the complete dismantlement of the KONR, and the ultimate transition from his role as Chairman of the Committee to the President of the New Russian Republic. Unsurprisingly, he has not only won, but swept the first elections in Russia in decades. Now that he's serving in an official capacity as a civilian head of state for the Russian Republic, and as Russia has now been liberated, there is little need for the KONR anymore. Of course, they've achieved their stated goal. Of course, the actual abolition of the Konar might be a little bit more difficult than signing a piece of legislature. The organization is thick with bureaucratic red tape and has tendrils in every part of the new republic's administrations. Very, very nice. Improving party unity? Yes, please. Th truthfully, the unity party or Yedinstvo in Russian. It's a mishmash of ideologies primarily united by those associated with the former Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia. Those who are loyal to Zykov and the prominent lo individuals who have been bought to help manage the republic's growth. Sometimes it feels as if the unity party is not a party at all. Instead, a voting bloc could be various interest groups. To ensure that the unity party remains united, the chairman has decided to trim the party's fat and so to speak by smoothing, by smoothing over the irreconcilable differences, removing some of the more troublesome party members and reinforcing his hegemony over the party. This way, Zykov will make sure that Yedinstvo will stay the dominant party, guided by an actual vision, Zykov's vision, which would be a great, wondrous thing. Let's come over here for even more research speed. Yes, please. 16 days, 2 weeks, not bad. Spend. Cut. Yes, please. Wow, now we've... Okay, we got a good amount of manpower now after recording in more places. Beautiful. <sighs> even more stability, even though we don't really need that much more, but that's alright. Looking pretty darn awesome. And then assessing the army? Uh, let's go with consulting business. One of the surprising products of Russia's warlord era was the beginning and expansion of a number of businesses and corporations across Siberia and the Far East. Operating in legal capacities or otherwise, ever since their victories in the wars of reunification, a lot of these businesses have been in legal limbo, some still operating while others are frozen for various reasons. We should make a list of the businesses that have since emerged following the collapse of the Union and figure out which belonged... Uh, should be brought into the public sector of our burgeoning governmental sector, which should be encouraged to rejoin the now official private sector of our economy or simply be shut down entirely. Democracy's first steps. The results for the first ever elections in Russia are in, and they prove to be the democratic process, or the democratic process, has gone very well overall. A social democrat, liberal, and conservative opposition all won a few seats in the election. This means they will have a struggle against the Zykovit majority, but any opposition is in opposition. While some have said this means Russia is hardly democracy as the opposition party has little power, it still shows that we have come a long way from a dictatorship. People may even take an interest in opposition and democracy as it continues to exist. Everything is only starting to take shape. However, the opposition party being allowed into power is not making things easy for us, and even with our very large majority, many still criticize our ways past needs, and so Zykov's government may not be able to work as well as the opposition had hoped. They have been allowed to continue unharassed by the secret police, though, so that should show something. Hardly. I love secret police. Oh, a little bit of lag. Oh, and the other people have done okay. So much for those people in the East. Hey, the Russian Republic is looking beautiful. And the Central Siberian Republic will become Siberian Republic. You know what would be cool? What if we could peacefully reunify? You know what? I'd love to integrate this, but advanced development phase, I'd love to do that too. Improving party unity. Consolidating success or business. Can we... I, I, I really want to prepare for the unification war. Uh, which will happen in about six months. And as you can tell, this is the last episode in this campaign. But hey, it is what it is. Yeah, not bad. Really not bad at all. And who are they led by, actually? Let's take a quick look. Oh, Sakharov? Not bad. They're liberal democracy. We're authoritarian democracy. Marathis and Reunion. Okay, then. A well old machine, Zykov's burgeoning unity party has been a bomb waiting to explode. A big tent made up of our old ROA Demo Democrats, army officers, reformers, and businessmen. It's hard to say how to stay together this long. But with Zykov's new efforts to remove the less desirable men from the party, it seems all are beginning to work together even more to get Zykov's plans approved. The party has even come to invite people from all across Russia, some even from the warlord governments. While the unity party may last be lasting for now, no one knows how long this will last, or how how it will continue to stay united. One thing is for sure, it won't last forever, no matter what Zakov can come up with. The only thing that matters is if it's working now. Cool. And let's come back over here, perhaps. And, no, let's get some better guns. Yeah, we've got to focus more on infantry and anti-air equipment. No. Let's grab this one. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. Just doing business. 
And despite the official dissolution of the Committee of the Re Liberation of the Peoples of Russia, the army has been brought as victory thus far and has been since integrated as official armed forces of the Republic, does need its fair share of attention. Uh, Zykov remembers the loyal officers who helped make this vision a reality. The President of the Republic has ordered that a commission be set up to examine and assess the status of the Republic's army and figure out if and where more attention, funding, training, or otherwise needs to be paid to our boys. Zykov knows full well that the army got him this far and it doesn't intend on losing their support any time soon. Investing in talent? Yes, please. The future of Russia is in the hands of the youth. As such, the youth deserves the best we can possibly offer, especially in terms of education. The president has decreed today that schools, be they primary, secondary, or post-secondary institutions, shall be all funded by the government, with generous research grants to be handed out to the most promising of scholars at all ages. Of course, while this is far from cheap, it's an investment, not only that one that will yield economic results, but an investment into the future of Russia, and of course, the future of the Unity Party. After all, it was the Unity Party that sponsored the institutions and gave out the grants, and will make sure that the new generation of talent will remember this. They shall serve Russia, and they shall also serve Yed Yedinsvo, or however we want to pronounce it, the Hawk. Vladimir Bayersky adjusted his tie in the mirror, and his uniform crisp and clean, his cap perched perfectly above his eyes. Today, like every day, was another step on the road to his total liberation from the Slavs. To the west, squatting like a half-mad giant over Europe, was the Reich. Was that... What was that Hitler had said of Russia? Kick in the door and the whole rotting foundation would come crashing down. Ironic, then, that Germany was riddled with rot, at resting atop a mountain of corpses created by a civil war. Rotten foundations, indeed, thought Bayersky. He stopped fiddling with his tie for a moment, his hands failing to do to his stride so, or side, slowly as he fixed his gaze with that of reflection. Goodness, did he re really look so old, tired? He remembered the flight from Poland, his, capt his capture by the hated Germans, his own terrible shame at serving in the puppet army. He looked into his own eyes and saw horrors laid, laid over horrors, a waking nightmare that would not end. Bayerski blinked, forcing down the screams. Rattling machine guns and the smell of smoke and blood that threatened to overtake him in that moment. No, he was in control. Bayersky nodded in to his reflection. He would help to take Russia by hand into the new age and with the support of Zykov, defend this infant republic to the bitter end. Bayersky forced a grim smile. The republic would endure, would endure and so would he. It is too dangerous for me to put these things into the words. I am afraid that they might become gigantic and I will no longer be able to master them. And now it's time for Democratic Officers. <clears throat> While the Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia was, formally, entirely subservient to Zykov, the reality of the situation was much more complex, with a lot more reactionary and troublesome individuals more interested in more authoritarian ways of governing, or worse. Truthfully, the old guard of the Russian Liberation Army, the KONR, have long been a thorn in the President's side, especially as it continued to grumble about Zykov's increasing democratic vision. It's time for the old guard to be put out of out to pasture. They've served long and they've served hard, and it's well for these exact reasons that these officers, well used to having a very present opinion in politics, should be replaced with a new generation of officers, free from the stains of collaboration and corruption, fresh faces, local faces, to help begin the process of depoliticizing the army. Small decrease in officers, but more loyalty, which is a good thing, probably. Uh, you know what? Let's go, and just go to the next phase. So we can maybe do this at progress at 6% each month. Man, I remember the days when we had a lot of political power, but now we don't. Bus military business oversight. Long has been the distinction between military officer and the CEO been blurred for many members of the Russian Liberation Army, who have for years been both serving in the capacity of commissioned officers within our armed forces and leaders of businesses. Well, this has come to be known as the military business oversight. <clears throat> For some time, this worked when the Russian Liberation Army was eking out an existence in the city of Samara, barely being able to uphold or hold its own against raiders, bandits, and German bombs. However, Zykov has done his best to ensure that the system will entrench in parts of Russia. Doesn't expand any further. Despite all best efforts, certain reports point to the further expansion of the system east of the Urals, a development that is almost alarmed that has alarmed the president and his supporters. Zykov has called for the immediate covert investigation into the expansion of the so-called oversight. Whether or not he feels as if he can control it, or if he'll move to stem its growth, is yet to be seen of course. Followed up with, oh, a healthy society. Oh yeah, let's try that one. Though through no small effort from President Zykov and those who work under him, the foundations of what he has begun ref referring to as the healthy society has finally begun paying off. The President Zykov has created a deep state within the new republic, a body of influential politicians, officers, and businessmen who all work towards a vision that the president has for the nation. The industries that are booming, the people are feeling hopeful for the future and are slowly learning that the intricacies of Zykov's democracy, and most of all, the military knows its place and is closely monitored by Zykov's friends in high places. The dream of a true Russian republic has never been closer, and the president knows that now, more than ever, that Russian people must now be tempered for the future. More civilian morale and increased military morale as well. That's good. That's pretty good. Slightly decreased scoring time too. Not bad. <clears throat> so we're done with this. I want to make sure that we're our like infantry is actually good enough. So we'll go with that. And oh, this will be done very soon too. Nice. I still would like to do a little bit more for our tanks as well. Getting more breakthrough would be very, very good. I mean, the breakthrough is already probably pretty decent, but that's alright. Let's invest. 
I am finished. Zukov scanned the report several times. Silence and control the meeting room for ten minutes now. Vladimir stared at the chairman with a blank expression. Finally, Zykov let a deep breath and slowly restarted the conversation. So, Major Vladimir, can you please explain why these documents here, taken from over 30 different sources all over Russia, claim you to be the simultaneous owner of We Paint Houses LTD, Team in Metalworks, World War acting figures, three restaurants on Vyatka, two mattress stores, and you are considered to be the mayor of a uh, non-existent Durak, Durakgrad. The officer inspected the papers, letting out a loud hum and uh, appearing to be deep in thought. At first, Zakov expected the man to come up with an excuse. Five minutes passed, then ten, but Vladimir kept flipping through the documents. <sighs> Vladimir, Vlad! Zakov reached across the desk and grabbed the papers out of the soldier's hand. You are an army man. You just can't go around honing a hundred different businesses. The major remained still, not unlike a child being scolded for misbehavior. The chairman forced a smile and leaned in, whispering... Vladimir nodded for a second. Well, see here, Comrade Zakov, it all began when I heard about private co. Zakov jumped out of his seat, shouting, I don't care. Explain why an officer, you, have all these enterprises. Vladimir was shaken, but recomposed himself. See, I'm a businessman. Zakov fell down in his seat and doubted up his enforcers. Resigned to the same speech for the third time. I think that one's the more appropriate one for us to do, and a healthy society. Oh, yes, please. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, we have political power. Look at that. I love to do that, but let's integrate your roles because we're going to need all that political power and or manpower and stuff like that. And I suppose shortage has adequate number. We'll increase that anyways, hopefully. Um, smuggling operations doesn't even matter. We're not even doing this anymore, so this literally doesn't even matter. I don't care about that. And let's see. Tool procurement. I want to go with this one. Also, off screen, we did get better uh, research facilities. So now we have outdated research facilities, so we lost some political power, but hey, whatever. It is what it is. <clears throat> we can close out for now and read the next focus, shall we? New partners in the East. Some of Zekov's most powerful allies were the various powerful and influential businessmen in the Western Russia and the Urals. Not only did they found him in return for what they believed would end up as a beneficial partnership between them, they also actively worked with the now president to make sure that Russian economy would be in time rapidly revitalized. Of course, while the eastern half of Russia is much more sparse in terms of people, let alone wealthy businessmen, they certainly still exist. We should scour our new territories to find anyone who would be able to forge similar connections with, a with the president and the party in return for the local support for Zekov's agenda, increased business influence and in GDP, and so Increase quarrying time. Sign us up. Yes, please. Spend slash invest. Like Wall Street bets. Cool. Mm, uh, yeah, we'll do this one. Cool. Unity. That's, this really does nothing for us, so there's no point in seeing that or keeping that open. And then we shall do the military on the march. The Russian Republic will finally reunify and stabilize to degrees. It is a new state in a turbulent world where power shifts rapidly and tensions run high, the smallest of diplomatic slights. In this world, it would be a fool's errand to neglect the nation's armed forces, and the president has no intention of doing so. The army marched to victory, marching east and pushing our rivals out of their bunkers, cities, and barracks. Now our army must continue to march, to train, drill, and be ready for any future threat. A generous amount of funding shall be bestowed on the army to keep them happy and combat ready for when it comes time to look west and liberate the last of Russia, working with the new regime. The being regional governor was an easy and being the regional governor of Omsk was even worse. Alexander wasn't fond of his job, wishing more and more that he'd become governor of Sverdlovsk instead of absolute heck Omsk was. He had all the mixed feelings about the new regime, the ROA. From what he had heard in Sverdlovsk back in the day, they were traitorous dudes from Western Russia. On the other hand, the administration was still very nice towards him, except for placing him in Omsk, of course. Still, he was given many resources to maintain stability in the territories under his control, and any threat of Black League remnants was swiftly taken care of by the army. <clears throat> Yeah, did the ROA really work towards the goodwill of Russia, or were the rumors of them being collaborators true? Was it bad to help the ROA achieve their goals and help them maintain control over the new territories? Was he giving up everything he fought for in the Ural military district for the good of Russia? A quite curious dilemma. Mm, I want to do this one next. Even more monthly development. Shall we? And a little bit more than half a billion in terms of debt, but it's alright. Followed up with what? Ooh. Free civ oh my goodness, we actually have free civilian factories? No, 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 we don't believe in free civilian factories here, nope. Every factory has a cost. And whether we can build a dockyard or not, we're gonna build, look, I mean, just look at how much we've built. This is ridiculous, and I love it. Build, 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 build. My apologies for the clicking, it just has to be done. Uh, boom, 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 boom. And even though this is the last episode, we're still gonna build stuff. Like, I don't, I don't care, like, building is mandatory here. State-run building schools. And a statement to the world. Oh, let's go and read that too. 
So, the President of our Republic has been working on what he calls the first statement to the world. He is prepared to make this statement across international airwaves as well as on very publicized broadcasts domestically. Zakov has formulated what he believes is the best path forward for Russia and the international sphere, now that he's finally unified the nation. Emphasizing the strength of Russia and unilaterally denouncing the Nazis as criminals and warmongers, Zakov also intends on praising the efforts of the U.S. and the Organization of Free Nations, which he believes will bring the Republic closer to the West. And by extension, those best equipped to help Russia when the time comes to push west and make the whole of the ROA's long journey towards a free, strong Russia. Changing generations, Pavel Alexandrovich Kovalchuk had swallowed his pride to join the new Republican army all the way from Western Siberia. He had reservations. How could he, the former German lapdogs claim to be saving Russia? But they were clearly the winning side and he'd be a fool not to join them. That said, the weight of the ancient Car 98 in his hands hardly felt like winning, and so he hadn't come all the way to fight with a German rifle. Sergeant, how can I fight with this? Pavel spat. We will fight as the rest of us do. Ryodoyov. Whatever you have and whatever you can find, now run the obstacle course. Incredulous. Pavel still... Rocks stood rock still. The sergeant rounded on him. Do you think yourself so strong that you need no weapon? In a heartbeat, the sergeant grabbed his rifle, yanking it away before using the momentum to flip Pavel to the ground and disarm him. Do you feel so mighty now? After a long, terrifying second, Pavel shook his head. This gun will not shoot straight. It will jam. It will break before the year is done. The rifle jabbed at Pavel's ribs, but it can still kill, and it has killed many who are stronger than you, who are equally helpless. And until you know your, our desperate struggle of fighting from nothing with, for, with this butcher's tool, you will not be strong enough to save Russia. From suffering comes strength, which is true. We all need struggles and things to overwork in our life to make us stronger and better. So good. So good over here. I really want to peacefully reunify. We should be able to do so, right? They're little Democrats. We're authoritarian Democrats. And now we've finished up our entire focus tree, which is honestly, to me, pretty gosh darn wild that we've done so before. Oh, this is, looks a little different. Um, 1971. Absolutely wild. Let's go and do this as well. See so the party? I mean, we can invest in this, but we're by far and away the largest group here. So, yeah. Burgundy and Bunkers? Oh, boy. Regional integration, we're integrating Yurlsk. Fighting black market trading, I don't really care for that. Smuggling operations. So yeah, we're pretty much done here with this, almost almost this campaign. I really, really hope though, we can peacefully reunify Russia. Because bef at the time of this recording, I've never done that before. So I would love to be able to do that. Beautiful. Oh no. Mm. Still building up roads. Support weapons, nice. We're doing this just in case we have to. More land and attack would be great. I've got more political power. We're going to probably do higher pay, probably. Yeah, we might as well. We need more officers. Recruitment campaign. I mean, that could be better, but might as well do this one, right? All right, man, we're done with that, too. Awesome. And we'll probably do develop mining techniques. We're at 49%. I keep looking back here for some, like, some other decision. How is Siberia? How many divisions? We have got 39 divisions of infantry. They've got plenty of manpower like us. They have quite a few divisions, too, so that's not good for us. And we also modernize the department, I suppose. There goes Iraq, killing Iraq. But what else is new? And we've got about a week left before uh, the New Year starts. Not bad, my friends. I'm, I'll am i be honest, like, this campaign's been a lot of fun. Like, early on, I mean, obviously early on, no matter what you play, or who you play as, especially in Warlords Russia, it's pretty... It's usually not easy... It's not usually too difficult unless you're playing like the Aryan Brotherhood or something. Or like the Dolvanga Brigade. That's that's a pretty tough campaign. I've tried that in my own personal time. That's pretty difficult. But prepare for the Unification War. Um, Oh, no. Worrying. No, I want to reunify the motherland. Wait, why is there no peaceful option to do this? Oh, crud. Oh, oh man. How can we not peacefully reunify? We're both democracies here. We're literally both democracies. That is incredibly disappointing. <sighs> Alright, so be it. Mm, air bases, sure. I don't want to do that one. We don't really need it. I want to do that one. And then we get way more political power. I don't mind doing that one too. Cool. That is <sighs> so disappointing. I guess if we have to, a grand showdown? I mean, it doesn't make any sense why we can't do this and help each other out. They have 100... Wow, they don't have any factories compared to us. We all roughly triple. We... Or almost triple. Almost triple their factories. That is so disappointing. I want to peacefully reunify. Mm, Tritology? Can we not do... There we go. Cool. And who can we get? Gennady Svolovev? Yeah. And we're done with the focus tree completely, so... 
Yeah. That sucks. Military austerity. Um, I probably shouldn't do this, but we're going to keep doing this anyways. Because debt is but a number that we can use and exploit. She got more radar. But that's alright. Uh, roads. Well, they're under construction. Fuel? Or really rubber? We can maybe work on one. Well, maybe we can't work on one. I've already filled up all the slots here. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's go do raise emergency. Dudes, we don't have to do that by the help of our preparedness. So, mm, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens and we'll reconvene once we can just go to war. Well, I was going to strike Siberia first, but... Apparently they want to strike us versus Reno, so it's just totally fine with me. We're in a defensive war. Obviously there's our stability, but hey, whatever. We got plenty of political power. We've got a great GDP, so let's go put these people out of their misery. But first, let's make sure we do this as well. Make sure our armies actually have enough planes, because that would be pretty good, right? I go do that, and then you guys come over here. We should have enough planes for this. And actually, do I need more yeah, planes, actually? Do we have any more? Nope. And how about you guys? You guys are casts. We should have enough casts. Well, not a lot, but hey, we'll take it. There you go. Good luck. All right, we immediately begin assaulting them. And oh, it's Truckerinos. They have probably 20 combat width. Well, we're attacking with 240 combat width division, so that should be pretty good for us. Hopefully, we do pretty okay. But then again, you never know. They're attacking us. We're attacking them. They've lost 9,000. They've up to 67 divisions more than us, probably, or maybe even equal. You never know. But I'm honestly not too worried about this war. I mean, this is why you make 40 combat width divisions in Russia, just because overall it's almost impossible to beat 40 combat widths. Especially if you're uh, trying to defend against 40 combat widths. Oh boy, just, ooh, it's not going to work. Uh, I think I'm done cutting the budget, or expanding. Eh, no, no, screw it. Actually, let's spend more money now. I know it's a sin sometimes to spend more money, but we even have a deficit. Like, when we spend more money on our soldiers, so. Go right ahead, guys. You're doing a great, tremendous job. Uh, I really, as I said earlier, I really wanted to, you know. I'm not even going to read this. Just, just do whatever. Uh, reunify peacefully. Like, w there's so much potential for us to reunify peacefully. We've killed, we lost 7,000, 8,000 versus 50,000, so, I mean, there, there's really no hope for these guys. And they, they got enough, you know, manpower still, up to 60 divisions, but there really was no hope under the Black Sun for these guys. How disappointing. Uh, Pavel, anything else here? No. Vasily, no. Support weapons will be nice. Uh, there you go, you can get some of that. That doesn't matter at this point. And we can grab some uh, better guns. Why not? Tomsk is a frontline city. And it will be ours very, very soon. These guys had a choice. And they, they chose really poorly. <laughs> uh, Borman must have won, yeah. The last forever. I mean, 100%, 100%, not bad. We killed off almost 200,000 civilians. Jesus Christ. Like, guys. Guys. Uh, why? I don't want to do this. Zlakov did not want this. Oh, wow, look at this guy. Escape artist? A natural orator? Cool. Let's go and get this person and we'll start putting down some resistance, shall we? I mean, we're just letting things go. Like, I'm not even controlling any of this. Set and forget build intel. No, let's come up here next. There we go. Anything else we can do? No, big sadness. Actually, did I change this yet? Do we go to... It is civilian oversight, which is not bad. It's so sad that it just had to be like this. It just had to be like this, didn't it? I'll take and cut all those guys off in the south. We've killed off over a third of a million while losing 25,000 soldiers ourselves. I mean, this is bonkers, as some might say. A little bit of damage. Not a lot of damage, but enough that makes us feel pretty good about ourselves. And then, some more core armor. Nice. Hey, look at them off. Beautiful. Teach them a lesson, shall we? Oh, wow, we got a lot more debt now. That sucks. But eh, it doesn't matter. $167 billion in terms of GDP. I love it. Six attack. My goodness. Uh, cut off almost half a million of them. Oh, it's definitely going to be over half a million once these guys are dead. Oh, our tanks are not looking good now, are they? We have five tank divisions. Look at that. We must be out of a lot. Eh, fighters not looking good. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, that's not looking good at all for me in battle tanks. But at this point, it doesn't matter. I hope when TNO2 comes out, I hope we can join the OFN. Uh, that was one comment from uh, oh uh, Iran fell apart as well uh, from yesterday. Like TNO2 will be interesting how it'll be set up, especially with us. Like with us 
choosing you know focusing on the military versus the ROA or the ROA versus the businesses versus the Democrats. It'll be interesting who who gets selected to lead and how we will like join the OFN and stuff if that's possible, which we probably would be able to. So. Well, we've lost 40,000 versus roughly 600,000. Not bad. Um, yeah. Actually, they shouldn't be able to survive for much longer. They actually have less, fewer divisions than us, which is awesome. Head on up. Just, tomorrow's a lot of fun. I'm glad someone recommended that I play Samara. It, Samara's usually, when, especially in the Warlord stage, it's pretty difficult to take out since... You have to snake around usually to take out Samara, the city of Samara itself, but playing Samara early on is not easy, like I said earlier, but I would say it's rewarding, especially if you go down the route we chose. So, it's definitely a lot of fun. I love TNO too much. I really do enjoy TNO a whole lot. It's so much fun just like, especially in the Warlord era, that's why I play so many Warlords, to start so small and be able to basically re reunite your entire country together is so great. We've killed off over 700,000 of them, so... Less than 26 divisions. Oh, they're out of manpower. And we've got roughly half a million to go, so. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. 43%. Not bad. We just need a lot more tanks. Actually, where are we? Yeah, we need more of those as well. Motorized. We're still making motorized, huh? Uh, yeah, not bad. We have plenty of cast. We can probably cut that down by a little bit more. That drill is not looking too bad either. Oh, wait. Oh, we can even use this. Wow, we got it just in time to use it. There we go. Awesome. And do Xinjiang. 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 Less than 20 divisions. Almost 900,000 casualties. Like, was it worth this? I mean, I really want to just peacefully reunify, but... 900,000 dead. I mean, my goodness. Oh, look at total warp score participation. 92% of the way there. Just a little bit more, guys. Just a little bit more. We've lost 50,000 versus 900,000. I mean, that's a pretty good casualty ratio in my mind. we got so much political power. I'm not sure what to do with it. Oh, military budget boost. Spend more money. Just spend, spend, spend. All, all across the board. Okay, we have no debt. Oh, don't you love it when you can just spend as much money as you want and you still can cut down your debt. I mean, that sounds like paradise to me. There we go. 930. Can we make it a million? Can we make it a million before we end this campaign? 50,000 versus a million. They only have seven divisions left. Come on, find those divisions and just literally beat them up. Are we not... Oh, we're not even moving now since... Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Uh, how are the tanks doing? Governmental ciphers. Nice. Any more? Uh, not that much more. Come on. Let's move, 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 move. Oh, there goes Iran. Oh, they actually... They're done with the war. Nice. Hey, Israel's here, too. Look at that. Be Mr. Begin. Uh, the German wreck led by Daddy Borman. Oh, uh, shield. Every vigilant watch, alright. America's probably doing okay under LBJ. Italian Empire, well, they're. Dem ah, Fanfani. Hello, Fanfani. Conservative democracy, huh? Alright then. Oh, we must have made another division then. Five, 22 infantry divisions. I mean, this is beautiful. Oh, don't tell me we've got to go all the way to Cheetah or Amur. That would kind of suck. Ah, uh, come on, just. There are only a few more guys left. Please. Please. I mean, you guys aren't... Oh, you guys are suffering from attrition. Some of you guys are. Go, 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 go. Did you get... Beat him up. Beat him up. There we go. A few thousand more dead. Nice. A few thousand. Not that much more thousands. Oh, yeah. You guys are just pretty much stuck. You're not even moving for some of you guys. Head down here. Head down here. Where are the tanks at? I want you to go like right here or something. Go to there. Ion. And then go all the way over here. Bubble key cryptography. Let's keep going, guys. Keep going. Well, our guys are moving, so it just takes time. Siberia's hard to take out, but... Oh, is it over? Oh, darn it. That's it. That's it. Oh, man. Hey, nice. 420. 421, I guess. Let's do this. Reunification of Russia. Have they really done it?
Okay, I think that's it. I think that is it. It's very, it was quite soft, I would say, for that uh, one. And then do that one because... Well, that should be it for us, right? We've got this region. Oh my goodness, look at all this. That's why I got so much political power. Uh, but can we actually get everyone done? We Oh, we barely have enough to get everyone done. Look at that, state of the party. Um, that should be it, right? Wow, okay. We're actually losing, we're not getting any political power. Uh, that should be it, right? Like, ah, familiar setting. We've done it, Zakov spoke. I the papers and reports on his desk with a smile. Samutin stood to his right. The Unity Party has secured its control over the democratic apparatus, and there's no opposition that can stand against it, either through ballot or through force. Finally, we can rest. A pause as Zakov turned his head to the economic minister. His face turning pale as he laid down the next report. Samutin, please explain this to me. Before I read them, give me a watered-down version. If it's bad news, give it to me as nicely as you possibly can. Zakov stared... Stare became focused as Samutin slowly spoke after a few minutes of quiet. Ba Bayarsky's militaristes are getting into fights with democracy activists and some led by someone led by someone new. Our rising star, Vasily Arakipov. Meanwhile, Siliyev Siliyev and supporters have been making moves. I fear they are attempting to grab at the reins of power. For a moment, Zykov sat with an expression of bewilderment on his face, followed by a dawning horror before finally lapsing into a very, very grouchy mood. You may leave now, he barely heard himself say it as Samutin darted out of the room, leaving Zykov alone with the reports on his desk. The drink he was just about to pop open in celebration and out of view of the public eye, photographs. Vlasov, Sergei, even Okton, all staying with him at some point or another, talking and plotting and planting daggers where no eyes could see for a time, and now here he was eyeing the reports of growing factionalism and plots within the party. After a few moments of contemplation, he simply cursed once more and opened the bottle with an expression unchanged. Nostalgia was not always a feeling one wants, and that finally is the end of Samar, which actually, I should say finally, I mean Samar, like I said earlier, is, is a lot of fun we almost have 200 billion in total GDP, but we didn't even reach 1972, but that's alright with me, deficit's looking great the the, de the g total GDP is looking fantastic, and we have no doubt, which is something I really strive for, even though we could cut down the military to improve things, but regardless this is the end of the campaign. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know in the comments below who else I should play as. I know there's people who want me to play, so want me to play as different forms of the UK or England. But thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.